Alright, in this video we are talking about the idea of a confidence interval. So a confidence interval, um, we talked about it in class a little bit. It's the idea how confident are we in our guess of what the population mean is or possibly the population uh, proportion. So remember that in the distribution of sample means, that's what this bell curve represents, this horizontal line here, this is all the possible sample means. Um, when we take a sample of some certain size, let's just say 30, just just to um, have a number. But we're taking every single possible sample of size 30 from some population. All right. So let's just say um, our population is all the students at a college. And this uh, data set is their heights. Okay. If we took a sample of size 30, if we're down here, this would mean the sample mean, the average of those 30, is the lowest it could possibly be. Meaning that all 30 people in the sample was was the shortest person that goes to that school every single uh, time. Every single person in that sample was the shortest person. All right, Must, It's uh, sampling with replacement. So we're able to pick that shortest person for every every single uh, person in that sample. All right, up here again that would mean that the tallest person is every single person in the sample. So that's what this line represents. Every single possible value of the sample mean. Alright now, is it likely to pick the shortest person every single time? Absolutely not. That's what this red line, the bell curve, is telling us. That red line is like the likelihood. Okay, It peaks in the middle at the average and it's really low on the ends, meaning, I mean, there, you can't even see it down here. It basically means it's almost impossible, virtually impossible, to um, have a sample mean of size 30 that only includes the shortest person every time. Okay? So that's what this line means. And remember, in the center is always the population mean. Okay? The population mean is the center. Now, when we're doing confidence intervals, we're trying to guess what this is. We don't know this. All right? It's kind of like all we know is the horizontal line that's all the values or, or just the number line really. And we really don't know where this number is on the line. We're trying to guess what this thing is. Alright, so what a 95% confidence interval is, and I've selected 95%. That's the most widely used one. Again, all of these are our possible sample means, sample averages. So we're going to take a sample. Oops, we took two. Let me reset it. We're going to take a sample. All right, and this little red dash right in the middle, this represents our sample mean. So this number, let's say, again, if it was heights, let's say the population mean was 70 inches, and let's say this represents um, 67. Okay? So that number right there, that sample mean, wasn't exactly the population mean. Okay, so we didn't hit the population mean exactly. But the interval of this width included it. So if we take that uh, sample mean and we go up and down this certain distance, the population mean, which is represented by this green line down through here, that population mean was included in there. All right. So the sample mean didn't hit it exactly, but when we go up and down, it did hit the population mean. So what happens here, I'm going to sample again. All right, again, the red dot represents our sample mean. We go up and down. We didn't hit it exactly, but when we go up and down, the interval does include the population mean. All right, now, what this is doing here, this is tallying how many samples I've taken how many times this hit represents how many times the population mean is in the interval. So as I continue to sample, I keep hitting it, keep hitting it, keep hitting it, and eventually we'll miss it. All right, occasionally, very rarely, things just happen, and when you sample, You, you can't control who's in your sample if you truly uh, sample randomly. You may uh, get a value, a sample mean that's really far away, 
I mean extremely far away from your population mean. Alright, here's where our population mean actually is. This is our sample mean. Okay? Now, remember, in this uh, idea, what we're talking about here, we're trying to guess what this is. Our best guess for what it is, is these little are these little red dashes, these little red dots. So for this particular uh, sample that we took, that mean that we get, that middle of this red line, is our best guess. All right, our best guess was way off. All right, it was so far off that even though we extend our interval up this high and down this low, we still miss the population mean. We still don't include that in our interval. Okay, But look, that's only happened one time out of 38. So 97% of the time, we do include that population mean that we're trying to guess in our interval. But this one time, we didn't. All right? And again, if we keep sampling over and over and over again, now we've missed it twice. All right? We missed it again here. And then I'm going to hit the sample of 50. Instead of going up one at a time, it goes up 50 at a time. All right? This is the law of large numbers, remember. Um, if we keep doing it over and over and over again, you see this thing settles down to around 95%. Okay? And that's what this is supposed to be. 95%. So what is this telling me? This is telling me that we will we'll rarely, I mean this one's pretty close, this little red dot right here is pretty close to the population mean, but we are so rarely going to be exactly on the population mean. We've, it's basically never that our sample is going to be exactly the population mean that we're trying to guess. But if we do a given an interval, this extension above and below that, of this certain width, 95% of the time, the actual value of the population mean that we're trying to guess will be included in that interval. And that's what we're trying to do here. We're trying to guess what the number is, but uh, we have no idea what it is. So we're just using our sample mean, whatever it may be, to be our best guess for what it is. Right. Sometimes it's included, most of the time it's included, but sometimes it's not. The thing about it is we'll never know. Right? If we're sampling, we never, ever, ever know if we included the population mean or not. But we're still confident, we're actually 95% confident that it is included, even if this is, even if this is ours, because it's the width of the interval, the width determines our confidence, not our sample mean. The width of the interval gives us this confidence level. Right? And that's the idea of a confidence interval. We're trying to guess what this is. We don't know at all what it is. We use the little red dash, the sample mean, to be our best guess, but we always go above and below to make an interval to uh, improve on that guess. 95% of the time, we, uh, we hit it. All right, now watch what happens when I increase this from 95% interval to a 99% interval. Watch what the width of the the uh, interval does. It got wider, right? And as it got wider, this percent went up. All right, if I go down to 80, they shrink down a lot, and we miss a whole lot more. Okay, so if we want to increase our confidence level, we have to increase the width of the interval. All right, so that's what's going on here confidence interval is just you're guessing you're trying to guess what the population mean or the population proportion is but you're using a sample mean or a sample proportion to come up with that guess